In case you're wondering what the heck I'm doing over here, the answer is, I don't know. Long story short, I'm a stay-at-home dad slash content creator. I have my main channel, which is at around 16K subs, and this one, which is at about 3K subs at the time of this recording. So I'm getting there, my channels are growing nicely, but I don't know a ton about computers, so it's been very difficult for me to figure out exactly what computer I need to help me grow my channels. A couple of years ago, I had found a sick deal on a used desktop. It was an Alienware with an, I believe, an 11th gen CPU and a 3080. It was pretty sick. But to be honest, it wasn't great at video editing. At least it didn't seem like it to me at the time. To be fair, I didn't really know how to use editing software that well. I just felt like I could find something better for how I was using the computer. I ended up buying an M3 Max MacBook Pro when that came out because I was curious what all the hype was with Apple computers and their silicon chips. And holy it was no joke. It made that Alienware computer feel like it was miles behind in terms of straight up video editing performance. I couldn't believe it. I returned that M3 Max because it cost too stinking much and bought a much more affordable M1 Max MacBook Pro for around $3,000 Canadian. And that's what I've been using now for the last seven to eight months. It's been great. The video editing experience with Apple Silicon chips is fan frickin' tastic. It really is, there's no denying it, especially the Max chips with the double encoders. But that's still a lot of money for a laptop. And while it's so impressive to be able to work on 4K compressed footage with Without proxies, it's still a laptop. I've been collecting some nice components with the goal of plugging my laptop in and using it as a workstation. And it has reminded me that sitting at a desk where every piece has been chosen for maximized ergonomics and comfort is the best place to be productive. But I also realized that having to plug in and remove the laptop every time I want to work there is kind of annoying. And that just having a desktop is just special in its own way. I can't really explain why. Those thoughts and the fact that I've been wanting to get into some gaming again really got the juices flowing. In my last video where I talked about how a friend of mine recently gave me his old Nvidia 2070 as well as some other computer parts, I mean, it was a sign from the universe that I needed to start building a desktop to see if switching back to Windows was in the cards for me. Well, over the weekend, I did it. I got some RAM, a hard drive, some thermal paste. I slapped it all together. It was the first time I've ever pasted on a cooler to the CPU. While I was done, I held my breath when booting it up and oh yeah. First try, I was able to boot to the windows from the USB. It was awesome. So this computer is an eighth gen i7 with 16 gigs of DDR4. I put a one terabyte NVMe drive in there, has a 600 watt PSU. I think the MOBO is an ASUS 370. In case you're curious, an older yet nice and quiet fractal case, and the 2070 of course. And I have to say, it's very snappy in Windows, everything loads and boots very fast, and this thing can still game like a champ. I've only tested a few games so far, but so far so good! So of course I had to get DaVinci Resolve back on there because I've learned so much since my last Windows machine, I needed to see if all the choices I've made along the way have been correct. I took some 4K footage out of my Sony ZV-E1 and yeah, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not good enough for how I like the video editing experience to be, but it's not bad overall. But it's not even close to the M1 Max. I mean, look at the scrubbing on the Mac. It's like butter. Now look at the scrubbing on the Windows machine. I mean, this was similar to my Alienware 11th gen Intel 2. I mean, it can play back everything and do it all right, but yeah, it's not even in the same league as the Max chips. However, I did a video talking about proxies recently because it needs to be said, Resolve makes using proxies so easy. You literally just open the app and click a button. Then all of a sudden, the footage on the Windows machine is working flawlessly like it is on a Mac. And here's where it gets really interesting. I did a bunch of testing with things when I had the M3 Max and this M1 Max, right? Things like adding magic masks and video effects, etc. Tracking on the magic masks on the M3 and the M1 are around 12 to 16 frames per second. Check this out. Boom. I mean, this is an older video card too, and that's just blasting what even the best M3 Max chip could do. My takeaway is this. The M1 Max is still insane. You can take 4K H.264 or H.265 footage right out of your Sony camera, load it up and edit the files with ease. It's like using a proxy, it's so friggin' fast, it's amazing. But 
it really chokes when doing anything GPU related like adding effects, magic masks, etc. The older Windows machine doesn't come close to the editing experience of the Max chips. However, by using proxies, which are super easy, this thing can become almost as good at editing as the M3 Max and has the added benefit of being able to absolutely rip when it comes to the GPU stuff. Plus using AI, which I imagine we'll be using a lot in the near future, utilizes GPUs too, right? Another benefit of having a beefy graphics card. Or are they building new cores now with AI in mind? Either way, I guess what I'm realizing is that if this M1 Max is still worth $3,000 Canadian and I can get similar editing performance plus being able to game all for a price tag that's a lot less, oh, well geez, maybe I should just do that instead. Considering the gear I already have, I could sell the laptop, build a beast of a desktop, have money left over to buy a smaller, weaker laptop on the side because I do like having a laptop for answering comments and just doing usual computer stuff. I could probably do all of that and still have money left over. All while having a machine that is a better overall video editing experience than my M1 Max MacBook Pro. I know it's not totally fair comparing a desktop to a laptop, but whatever, life isn't fair. Having been on both sides, I have to say, I get why people love Apple stuff. It's great if it does everything you need it to do. I enjoy using it, but it just doesn't do everything that I want it to do. And man, building desktops is fun. Being able to game again is fun and doing it all for less money is even better. What I realized is that I don't need a laptop for my YouTube channel. I always loved the idea of being able to edit my videos wherever I want. And while I kind of did that for a while, Ultimately, having a familiar space and a setup that enables you to work comfortably and efficiently with a bigger monitor, that's more important to me. Plus, I want to be able to buy parts and add it to my machine in the future if I ever need more hard drive space or better graphics cards. I built this older Windows machine thanks to a very kind friend, and it cost me about $100. And while it's not as good as the M1 Max when it comes to straight up video editing, I mean, it's not really close, with some slight tweaks like using proxies, it's almost the same. Plus I can game on it and use the video effects with the video editing software with much better performance than that of any of the Mac stuff. I guess what I'm saying is I'm leaning towards selling the M1 Max and building a completely new system and I'm really excited about it. And while I do wanna go with AMD, the Puget system guys say that the Intel chips with QuickSync, the built-in iGPUs, are better than AMD when it comes to working with DaVinci Resolve. So ah, I don't know what I'll do yet or what I'll build. I'm trying to do two things here. I wanna edit videos smoothly and I wanna be able to play 4K games with a decent frame rate with some nice settings. I thought I should build a video editing machine that can game, but because I'm not a really crazy video editor, I think I could get away with building a gaming PC that can also edit videos. What do you think? I was considering the 7900X3D chip but that seemed to be weaker for video editing and gaming than getting, say, the straight 7800X3D. And I don't love the idea of the power-hungry 14th gen Intel stuff, but I mean, if it shreds with Resolve and some gaming, maybe I should. But then do I have to get an NVIDIA card? The AMD cards seem like such good value. <laughs> I'm still learning here. I'd love to know if you have any suggestions for what kind of computer I should build. Please let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. I can't wait to build something then test the M1 Max against it because let's be honest, that thing is still such a beast. I get why it's so desirable even years later. Apple knocked it out of the park with those. They really did. Will I end up selling the M1 Max or will the performance still just be so good after going through all of this? I just wanna keep using it. Right now, I don't even know. It doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for what happens next. Okay, that's it for today. If you're having fun joining me on this journey, I would really appreciate it if you could thumbs up the video. It's the only way I can grow my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you. I love all things cameras and computers related and talking about growing a YouTube channel. So if that stuff interests you, you're in the right place. In case you missed my last video, you can watch that here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. Yeah.